I survived 100 days in Minecraft Cobblemon. Cobblemon is a Pokemon mod for Minecraft similar to Pixelmon but a bit more realistic. And not realistic in the sense that it's better graphics but actually functions as a Pokemon game. For example, the Pokemon actually look like they would in the game. In Pixelmon, it's kind of too realistic. The goal in the 100 days is simple. Collect as much Pokemon as I can, build a team, and of course, defeat the Ender Dragon and the Mysterious mysterious legendary Pokemon in the end world. Go grab a snack, grab some popcorn, and join me in this 100 day journey in Minecraft Cobblemon. The journey starts at day one, where I have to decide what starter Pokemon I want. It was a hard decision, but I had to choose Chimchar. He's a classic from Sinnoh, and I used to use him for my first Pokemon Diamond run through. After spawning in the world with my Chimchar, the first encounter we had after jumping into this lake is of course a Magikarp. In the moment, I actually totally forgot that Chimchar is a fire Pokemon and I had to retreat. The next Pokemon we found was a Pidgey. Chimchar was a bit weak at the moment, so I had to use my own hands. And let's just say Pidgey stands no chance to my hands. I ended up with some chicken and we moved on. It was getting dark outside and we had a small battle with this Wooloo that we of course won, but we had no home. So of course I had to use the noob trick for Minecraft, which is dig a hole and wait for the morning. From days two to seven, we actually got to evolve Chimchar to Monferno, which is really cool. And then when I was trying to build a house, I may or may not have gotten killed by a creeper. Well, let's just forget about that, right? <coughs> The following days consisted of collecting berries to create Pokeballs, catching our first Pokemon Pidgey, a failed attempt of catching Sparrow, and actually catching this really cool Ghastly. On day 7, we concluded with two new Pokemon. In total, our team consists of Monferno, Pidgey, and Ghastly. From day 8 to day 20, it was a grind mining down to the core of the Minecraft world getting iron, multiple, 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 multiple pickaxes, and just trying to complete the basics of Minecraft so I can continue collecting Pokemon. During that journey, we actually found this beautiful butterfly and I had to catch it. But after fighting it, we actually lost the opportunity. The Butterfree single-handedly defeated my entire team. At that moment, I knew I had to train my team a bit. I was so embarrassed. In the following days, I built a house so we could actually have somewhere to sleep. And of course, it had to be a cobblestone house. With the iron I mined, we built a PC so I could store more Pokemon. We also made a healing spot so we can, of course, heal the Pokemon. I ended the day by crafting some Pokeballs from the berries I picked. On day 21, I found another Butterfree and I had to catch it. After weakening it with my Monferno, we actually caught it this time. We added Butterfree to the team. Shortly after, we found this super cute Squirtle and quickly caught it. We now have Squirtle on the team, which is actually amazing because it adds a water type. The next day, I found this Magikarp and just decided to catch it to see what happens. Hey, we now have a Magikarp on the team. Not really useful until he evolves, but hey, it's okay. On my mining endeavors, we actually found some diamonds, which are great because we need some diamond equipment to fight the Ender Dragon. I also found this Onyx, which is really cool when we tried catching it and actually caught it. We were on a winning streak this day because we caught a Pharaoh shortly afterwards. In total, we added two new Pokemon into our inventory, so I can sleep well this day. On day 26, I found this Gyarados in the middle of the ocean and you know I had to try and catch it. After swimming up to it and throwing a couple Pokeballs, it was no chance. The only Pokemon I could use without drowning is Squirtle and Squirtle stood no chance. But you know what, I guarantee we're gonna catch Gyarados in the future. From day 27 to day 30, we found an abandoned house in the middle of the forest. And you know I had to explore it. When entering the door, it was completely empty. No Pokemon in sight, no one in sight. I immediately got the creeps and I had to leave. When exiting, we fought a Torkoal and actually got enough experience points to evolve Squirtle. Squirtle evolved into War Turtle, we're one step away from getting a Blastoise. 
The following day, I gathered materials, built an ender portal, and entered the nether. Right upon entering the nether, we found a Zubat, caught it the first try. I also found this coughing and had to fight it to get some experience points. Now, when exploring the nether, at the corner of my eye, I could see a Gengar. I followed it around the lava and actually got a chance to catch it. After throwing an Ultra Ball, we caught it in one try. The next Pokemon I encountered was actually Charizard. Charizard is one of my favorite Pokemon and I had to catch it, but I knew it wasn't going to be easy. Charizard almost wiped out my entire team, but I caught him with the Ultra Ball. We officially got Charizard on the team. It was not easy, but totally worth it. I then exited the nether and built a small house. I had to change some moves for Gengar and Charizard. I gave Gengar payback and gave Charizard Metal Claw and Dragon Breath. Now we have a completely new team. War Turtle, Monferno, Gengar, Charizard, and Butterfree. Just look at them. They're growing up so fast. I remember when I first caught them 30 days ago. From day 31 to day 35, we encountered a Mewtwo at midnight. At the corner of my eye in the middle of the darkness, I saw this kind of weird figure, it turned out to be Mewtwo. This is our first encounter with a legendary Pokemon, and I wasn't gonna let it go to waste. We engaged into a battle, and he wiped out my Charizard in one hit. After switching with some Pokemon, we actually got a chance to catch it. I kept throwing some Pokeballs and eventually caught it with a Great Ball. We caught Mewtwo. We're one step closer of actually getting a team that can beat the Ender Dragon and the legendary Pokemon at the end. I went back home, changed some moves on the PC, and added Mewtwo to the team. The next day, we encountered a Tauros. He wiped out my War Turtle, but we caught him with a Pokeball. I don't know if he's actually worth putting him on the team because our team is kind of built right now. Now, while we were exploring that day, we went into some oceans, went swimming a little bit, and among these three days, we had two chances to catch Gyarados. Now, you guys know how much I love Gyarados and I need him on my team. From the first day we caught Magikarp, we needed a Gyarados. Now, the first time I tried catching him, we had no chance because Mewtwo drowned. So I slept on it and the next day I tried to catch him again and we caught him underwater. Luckily, War Turtle clutched up and we had a chance catching him. It was pretty easy this time and we caught Gyarados. We now have Gyarados on the team. From day 36 to 40, we found a Rhydon right next to a tree. He was just sitting there, I had to catch him. After weakening him a little bit, we threw a Pokeball and caught him the second try. The next day, I found this Rapidash in the middle of a field, we had to catch it as well. This one was a bit harder, had to weaken it a little bit, and then caught it on my second try. When randomly walking next to a lake, I saw this dragon figure in the middle of the water. I thought it might be another Charizard or maybe some sort of dragon Pokemon. It turned out to be Dragonite. I quickly approached it and with Mewtwo, we fought it a bit. It actually was pretty strong, but Mewtwo triumphed and we actually got to catch it. It took a couple tries, but we caught it with a Pokeball. Dragonite is literally the perfect addition to the team. He's dragon type, has little weaknesses, and actually is pretty high leveled. On day 41 to day 45, I gave War Turtle the move Aqua Tail. We also encountered this Crobat, which I tried to catch, but unfortunately my Pokemon are too strong and... He kind of fainted. In better news, Monferno evolved into Infernape. This Pokemon is actually one of my favorites. I used to use him in the original Pokemon Diamond. He defeated the Elite Four in one try. He's the GOAT. I mean, just look at him. He's cute, but he also could burn your head off. The next day, War Turtle evolved into Blastoise. We are so close to getting the perfect team to defeat the Ender Dragon and the mysterious legendary Pokemon. Blastoise is huge in this game. He actually looks like he would in real life. I'm kinda intimidated. I also picked up some berries, made some last minute adjustments to the team, crafted some Pokeballs and some necessities we need before we go into the nether. And of course, we prepared to go into the nether to get the blaze and the ender pearls to of course craft the ender eyes and make it to the end world. On day 46, it was time. I made the leap of faith and we went into the nether. After around a couple hours of looking, I made it to the place where blaze spawn. After looking around, I also found this magmortar. He was just sitting there, so 
I had to catch him. Now the thing is, after we weakened him to catch him, I threw a Pokeball at him. He went inside, but he also went off the ledge and into lava. RIP that Magmortar. After looking around, I found a couple chests with the fire resistance potion as well as some flint and steel. Both will hopefully come into use. Now I made it to the blaze spawner, I used the fire resistance potion, and I started using my arrow. It was a slow process, but it was just trying to kill those blaze. Hiding behind some bricks and shooting them at the same time. I had a couple close calls, but I eventually made it out with the blaze. I needed 11 blaze in exact and that's what I got. Now the next step is to find the piglins and trade them some gold. It was a long process finding this place but I found it. I found some piglins and of course I had a little bit of gold lying around so we started trading. It took literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of trades. It was a process of getting gold, trading it, getting useless stuff, doing it again, 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 until we finally got enough ender pearls. I got around 22 ender pearls just in case we didn't find the end portal fast enough. I left the nether, we built some ender eyes, and we started the grind of trying to find the ender portal. We kept throwing the ender eyes in the air, following the direction. I kid you not, it took around 4 hours. We kept following the directions, trying to get to the ender portal, and we finally found around the distance it was. I kept digging down and we actually found the ender portal. It is now the end, the time to defeat the ender dragon and defeat the mysterious legendary Pokemon. I kept opening some doors and we quickly found the ender portal. This is it. This is the time. It either ends all here or we finish and it's over. Immediately upon spawning, I found it. The Pokemon. The legendary Rayquaza. It looked so cool in this game. I had to get it. We started fighting it. It was a long and strenuous battle. I spammed Gengar using Nightshade. Eventually that stopped working and he unfortunately fainted. Charizard was up next and he died in like one move. Blastoise and Rhydon also died immediately. It was not looking good. I was ready to smash my keyboard, destroy my computer and quit YouTube. But we had one chance left. Mewtwo. I put out Mewtwo and immediately he actually started doing damage. Using Psycho Cut twice put Rayquaza at a damage level that was actually able to be caught. You won't believe this but I threw a Ultra Ball and the first time I threw it it actually caught Rayquaza. Now with Mewtwo at like 20 HP it was time to defeat the Ender Dragon. We of course went around all the pillars, climbed them up, Used my arrow to destroy most of them, but some of them you actually had to climb up and destroy with your sword. I broke all the pillars, and what was left was the Ender Dragon in the middle of the arena, ready to be killed. I sat there in the middle of the arena, using my diamond sword. It was a kind of long process, and there was a few close calls because I almost died, but we actually destroyed and killed the Ender Dragon. It was over. It's all gone. It's all done. Our team did it. We beat Cobblemon. It's done. It's the end. But I wasn't finished yet. There was one more thing I had to do. Ever since I was a kid, there was always one thing I loved to do in every Pokemon game. And that was to collect the legendary Pokemon after finishing the final boss. It was always something special and magical in every single Pokemon game. Now in Cobblemon, there's three Pokemon I have to catch. The three legendary birds, Zapdos, Moltres, and Articuno. In day 100, that was my task. And let me tell you, it was not easy. After searching far and wide, I finally found a Moltres. It was level 45, so there was a good chance I could catch it. Unfortunately, please don't get mad at me, but after throwing out Infernape, he actually got wiped out. Now here's where the problem comes. I threw out Rhydon, and he one hit the Moltres. Ah. <sighs> Now I have to go on to the second legendary bird. 
in the middle of a lake right around a gyarados and some other pokemon zapdos was just sitting in the middle of an island i swam up to him and we initiated a battle i threw out gengar blastoise infernape and even mewtwo zapdos literally wiped out my entire team and even after a couple chances of throwing some pokeballs it was no good i also failed on catching a zapdos there was one chance left Left. One last legendary bird, Articuno. Articuno was just majestically sitting on top of a tree. I cannot make this up. This game is just beautiful. I climbed up the mountain to catch the Articuno. He ran away and I caught him on the side of a cliff. I threw out Gengar, he wiped out Gengar. Threw out Rhydon, also wiped him out. But Blastoise could weaken Articuno enough to throw a Pokeball. I threw an Ultra Ball and it caught Articuno on the first try. We now caught Articuno. What a way to end this journey. Cobblemon is a beautiful Pokemon recreation. With the mobs actually looking like they would in Pokemon, the perfect battle stats and Pokeball methods, as well as just the functions of the game, it actually feels like you're playing Pokemon in Minecraft. The game is beautiful, especially if you have some shaders on, and I 100% recommend downloading this Pokemon mod and trying it for yourself. Look at the team we built through this journey. We got Charizard, Blastoise, Mewtwo, Rhydon, Gengar, and now Articuno. Thank you guys for joining me on this journey. Please subscribe, like this video, and share it with your friends. This video took countless hours to make, so I appreciate you guys. And like if you want another 100 days in Cobblemon. This is Premier Plays, and I'll see you guys on the next video.